Hello everyone, this is Ben Botkin, and welcome to my little overview of Orchestral Tools' latest instrument, Berlin Woodwinds. In this video, I hope to just do a walkthrough of different patches, talk about pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses, um, show a couple examples of how this library can be used in the context of a fuller piece. So, uh, so come along with me and we'll, we'll see what we discover. To start out with, I'm going to play a little piece that I wrote. It's a demo called The Second Start of the Left. Yes, it's, it's uh, certainly... I should, get, I should explain that it is very heavily influenced by John Williams' Hook soundtrack and uh, some other, the old Disney Peter Pan, so hence the title. Um, but I wanted to um, just kind of show you what I did here. And hopefully you can get a good look at this despite the uh, resolution of YouTube. And we can just look at it section by section and I can just show you what the woodwinds are doing. Okay, so here goes. Okay, well hopefully those little crackles and pops are not uh, too much of a distraction. So uh, basically what I've got up here, uh, strings courtesy of Hollywood, East West Hollywood strings, which uh, I like very much. Um, some legato string patches, some trills. Um, some center brass brass, which you can see is the uh, red and pink here. It's used somewhat sparingly, but I often use the uh, solo French horn to double with, double with the woodwinds or the, or the winds and the strings. Um, but the th one of the main things I wanted to point out with this library is somewhat standard orchestral woodwind writing involves the woodwinds not really taking a foreground role, but just working behind the scenes, doing a lot of heavy lifting uh, adding color, doubling sections, adding movement, uh, flourishes, runs, that kind of thing. So on a surface, this may not sound like much of a wind, woodwind demo, but as you can see here, uh, woodwinds are, are here in blue. The woodwinds are really doing the le heavy lifting in this piece. Okay, some uh, percussion here, Celeste, Glockenspiel, um, pizzicato strings, harp, uh, cine samples, cine harp. Um, but let me let me play a couple main sections without the woodwinds so you can tell how big a difference uh, there really is. This is what happens when you write without woodwinds. So it sounds nice, but 
the amount of color that the woodwinds add is really remarkable. Check it out. Especially during this section where the uh, woodwinds are basically providing the whole sort of core movement of the of this section. Okay, but let's just play the woodwinds by themselves and you can hear how much is actually going on. Just kind of standard wind ensemble writing here. Flute, flute, uh, bassoon, clarinets, and uh, oboes. So, so there's that little piece. Okay, well let's just start going through the patches. And to begin with, we'll focus on all the long patches, long articulations, uh, legatos and sustains particularly. If we go over to our... Uh, Berlin Woodwinds in the Contact Libraries window. Click on the Instruments panel, and here's what we've got. We've got piccolo, first, second, and third flute, flutes, 8VA, which is, I believe, three flutes in unison, and then a piccolo an octave above. Uh, first oboe, second oboe, English horn, first clarinet, second clarinet, clarinet ensemble, which I believe is three uh, clarinets playing at the same time, first bassoon, second bassoon. And it's really cool to me that they actually sampled not just one flute, and then if you want a flute ensemble, you duplicate it, but they actually recorded three different players with three different recordings on three different instruments. And each one has a totally different uh, characteristic in its sound, different color, different intensity. And having those options are great, not only for um, creating ensembles that really with sounds that really mesh and sound alive together, but if I want to just pick out a, uh, a uh, little solo, if I'm writing a solo line for a certain piece, I might want a really bright flute sound, in which case I might uh, pick the first flute. Forgive me, that was the, that's the first flute transition. So here's, here's the first flute. Uh, or if I want uh, a more breathy, airy flute, I might choose a third flute, which is kind of like this. So just having the freedom of choice like that is really wonderful. So let's let's run through some of these. Uh, first of all, just to introduce you to the folders, each instrument outlined here has 
a series of articulations that's almost identical for every instrument. Dub everyone has double and triple tongue. Um, everyone has legato. Everyone has portato short and long. Uh, everyone has staccatos. Not everyone has staccato shorts. Everyone has sustained patches and trill patches, and most of the instruments have runs. But focusing on legatos, let's take a look at piccolo. I couldn't resist. That's what piccolos are for, after all, right? One well, neat thing about the player, uh, I will go down to first flute to uh, to show you this. Within the contact player, here we are. Um, there are a number of different things that you can you can modify and you can change. Uh, vibrato, for example, you can select this flute um, with just normal vibrato, which is not quite constant, but it feels pretty natural. Or you can select it well, with no vibrato. Or with a uh, progressive vibrato, which starts with none and then you know progresses. Which, depending on on the passage you're writing, different ones will really can really be helpful. Also, there's you can adjust the volume of the legato transitions. So here's normal, or rather, here's the uh, the default settings. Here it is pushed up all the way. You can hear that, or taken down all the way. So you can really mix this to your taste. So let's take it back about to what was standard. Uh, then also the release samples. You can you can you can really adjust so much. You hear that? Okay. Um, key noises. Hear them? Yeah, there's actually they're actually randomized as of the 1.1 update. They're actually randomized not to hit every time, but to come in at random, on random notes. Okay, so there's some of the things you can do. Uh, oh yeah, also mic positions. The default is a mix of close and room. Um, so I believe that's what mix is and I'm not really going to go into the mic positions but you can load different ones you can load room and then you've got room or close oops disable room so you can just you can pick whatever is is appropriate for your mix and it'll depend on the sound you're looking for and the other libraries that you're combining it with but we'll just stay with normal. So this amount of control you have with almost every legato instrument and a lot of the other instruments as well. So that is very cool. If you don't like the uh, strength of the legato, you can just punch it up. Uh, you have that option. So that is very cool. So that's first legato. Oh, oh, this is quite cool. If you go into the first flute runs, you can select runs transitions and it works like a very fast very fast flute I'm being a little bit sloppy I'm missing some notes you know that kind of thing which is quite cool, and uh, Piccolo has the same thing. So that's neat. Uh, next, first flute sustains. Uh, this is really great. Also, very low RAM load. This is about 30 meg. Really like those. Um, second flute legato. Again, you have all the same 
uh, vibrato and uh, legato controls. Flute three, the really nice airy one. Okay, flutes eight VA. English horn. First oboe. Second oboe. This is. Oh, they're mislabeled. I'm confused. Okay, well, this is uh, first clarinet, and the clarinets are really beautiful. Oops. Okay, that wasn't quite right, but you get the idea. Uh, second clarinet legato. Just if you want a different sound, or if you want to mix them. Which is great fun. You can lay down a uh, sustained flute, a uh, little flute chord. You can uh, you can go to it. Metronome is usually recommended for that kind of thing. So clarinets are really beautiful. I really like what they got with clarinets. Uh, clarinet ensemble, three clarinets in unison, I believe. So they're, those are really nice. Oh, bassoons are glorious. Smooth and silky, it's so wonderful. Second bassoon.
can do some combinations. Say I lay down a little um, pizzicato strings bed. Louts. Maybe not, that was a little messy. But anyway, you get the idea. Uh, so those are legato patches, which I think are really great. There are a couple places where you can hear a little bit of bleed. Um, let me show you. You hear a little bit of bleed from... Like here, in between crossfading, right here, go some piano to moderately forte to, you know, quite loud. Sometimes you can almost hear the overlap of these different uh, moderately forte and forte samples uh, as you crossfade between them, which um, Hendrik and the other guys at Orchestral Tools have been working on this, and they're, they've said they're going to continue to work on this to try to eliminate that, but it seems kind of inevitable that you're going to get some in um, when you sample a solo instrument with slightly different intonation on different notes. I, I kind of wonder, how do you totally avoid it? But it's the sort of thing you can work around. Um, samples are not perfect, just like real instruments aren't perfect. And you gotta be smart, you gotta be clever. One of the main principles in, in writing realistic sounding sampled music is being aware of your weaknesses and finding workarounds. So this to me is not really a downer. I mean, it's a step less than perfection, but hey, what do you expect? Nothing's perfect. So, yeah, building ensembles, let's say first, let's say two oboes and two flutes. The combinations and, oper and uh, possibilities are, are almost endless. Um, real quick, before we move on to short patches, let me load up some of the other sustained patches. The flute sustained patch I showed you, let's see, foist clarinet sustains. Really lovely, and let's throw in some bassoon sustains for good measure. Bassoon legato. We don't need the second bassoon. Let's see how this works. Let's move it out of the way.
you know, I love these sustained patches. They're low RAM load. You can actually get a surprising amount of movement out of them. Really wonderful. So there's there's a short look at um, <laughs> short could have been shorter, but it could have been a lot longer. Uh, oh, look at the long patches now. Uh, shorter articulations. Alrighty, short articulations. Again, I'm not going to be able to go through every patch. Uh, but let's start with uh, piccolo, a double tongue. Um, I think pretty much every instrument comes with the double tongue and triple tongue options, which basically you can play twice or three times as fast based on how quickly you play. And, and the way it works is um, one, one play when I push the keys down and then one when I lift them off. So you can do cool stuff. Or... So that's, that's what double tongue is for. Uh, then here are piccolo. Don't mind the labeling over here, that's off. Uh, piccolo staccatos. Uh, then we have, let me smooth this over here so we don't have to. B for instruments. Okay, first flute, triple tongue, which is the same thing except uh, plays once when you push the keys down, once when you lift them off, and then once um, in whatever amount of distance, it, what time it was between the first and the second, it will be between the second and the third. So you can go. That kind of thing. Uh, staccato, first flute staccato, short. Yeah, messy. And that's where it runs out. Oh, this is cool. For these, you can also adjust the wind noise. So I'll take a listen. Or turn it off. Or down. And then there are first flute Trills, but only up one half step or one whole step. So let's see. So those are nice. Um, second flute trills. Oops. Sando trills. Oh, these are wider trills up to a fourth, so let's see. You don't hear that too often. Okay, uh, and then the flutes 8VA, which again is. Flute ensemble and a piccolo an octave above staccato. This kind of stuff. Okay, English horn, staccato.
oboe. Again, doubling these can be fun. That kind of thing. Let's see. What here? Oh, yes. Okay, oboe trills. And these you can go from uh, up to a fifth. So let's see. That's very cool. So you're gonna very neat. I'm gonna have to use that sometime. Okay, clarinet staccatos. Clarinet double tongue. Same thing as earlier. You can also adjust the speed, kind of the attack and the bite of, of them. So, listen. Clarinet ensembles for Sando. Soon staccatos, these are brilliant. Actually, let me replace that with short staccatos. Uh, replacing, okay, this is very neat. You know, that's, I didn't get it quite right, but you, but you get the idea. Uh, and double tongue. So let's say I was going to suggest my tempo here a little. And let's make me a waltz real quick. See what we can do. This for Sando.
Okay, let's take a look at the articulations performer. Uh, you can find that there's instruments, little panel here, and you can find all your regular patches, and then the multis for your articulation performer. And here it is. Uh, this is your, your little interface, and then it keeps the instruments kind of in the queue here, but it's cool. They won't actually, the samples won't actually load and take up, uh, take up RAM space uh, unless you load them into the appropriate cell. So let's, let's make one. Staccatissimo, and they load, once the, the articulations patch is loaded, they access almost instantly. And let's say in the second vertical cell, we throw a sustain. Okay, so right now, I'll turn this off. Right now, you can hear the sustains. Yeah, if I select the right track, you can hear the sustains. You can hear the sustains. Or, you know, select staccato, staccato. Um, now, or I can push this button and I can connect the two simultaneously. Which can be nice if you want to do a little... But you want to kind of, you can almost, you can merge them. Or you can do this. Using the velocity filter, you can say, I don't want anything above 88 velocity for, stacch for staccatissimo to play. And say for sustains, I don't want anything above 80, below 89 to play. So what you can do is, you can have a, you can separate the two. So you can have it in the same way that uh, Cine samples, uh, I really liked the way they did their uh, their cinebrass, where you a soft hit was a very short note, and then a longer hit was a long note. So, if uh, say we add a uh, portato long, you can do this kind of thing. You can do a like. That sort of thing is cool. Uh, and then you can go horizontal and you can activate switch between those with key switches. So you can uh, throw in a legato and go from legato to basically wherever you want. Legato to just a regular sustain or staccato and you can kind of do the same thing. So, and then you can uh, key switch between them. So if I want to do a little staccato part. So that's how the articulation performer works, and you can you can add more cells, or you can delete cells, and I can throw any you know I've got all this different stuff to pick from. You can throw in trills, you know it's you have a lot of flexibility here. Only downside, and I don't know if this is actually a downside, but I think you you have to have a dedicated contact player for the articulations performer, which you know depending on your workflow might really not be a problem. So there's the articulations performer. Before orchestral tools made Berlin woodwinds, they made two specialized effect libraries, orchestral string runs and uh, symphonic sphere, which focus on textures, effects, and specifically runs. So when I was reading up on Berlin woodwinds, uh, I knew that one of the things that they were really going to get right was the runs and effects. The scripting for the Berlin woodwind runs is apparently bas works basically the same way as it does in orchestral string uh, orchestral string runs. So here's what you have. Okay, over here, first clarinet, let's see, uh, the piccolo, flutes, clarinets, and I think oboe all have kind of a basic uh, octave runs patch which you can sync to your host tempo. So here are uh, uh, runs for clarinet, 
if I select it, you can see what I'm doing here. Each one of these are, uh, just grabs a different, different uh, run. I can turn switch it to major or minor. And then down here, down these low keys, I can select, I can select key. So C major, D minor. Turn on the metronome, you can hear. So you can see how it's syncing to the host tempo. Um, then here's the same thing with the first flutes. And let's. If we double them and say overlay them with some pizzicato strings, though I might separate them, but you, you can do this kind of thing. And if you speed it up, let's mute one. Here, speed up. So, so this is great for these are great pre-recorded runs. You can use these basically in any situation. But a very cool feature that uh, Berlin Woodwinds comes with is the feature to make your own runs. Hence, their run builder. Here it is, and kind of like the articulations performer. Uh, it has individual cells that can be controlled uh, by key switch, which you can fill with the, um, with the right sequence of notes. So let's say we grab triplets down. Let's make sure we're minor and the root key is C. So let's see. And right now, auto tempo is on, which is the button which uh, syncs it to the host tempo. But the cool thing about this is, let's say I wanted to do, I wanted to mix it up a little. I could add a, uh, let's see, no, I'll see triplets down, and then triplets up, and then trills. So I can do this, I can do this kind of number. And you, yeah, let's do this kind of thing. Okay. Great. And then you can select major or minor, Doric, uh, Lydian, all, all these different uh, different scale types. But one thing to uh, keep track of is uh, make sure you have the right key selected down here. These key, key switches select the key. So uh, see if you're doing a D minor. Uh, they won't trigger certain notes that aren't really in that key. So if I play a chromatic scale, here's what you hear. So if you if you want them to work like they're supposed to work, make sure you have the right key selected and the right mode as well. So, you know, here's a situation of us slapping it on top of the other thing we've got here. Now that was a little sloppy, but you, you can see what it's for. And uh, the runs builder, there's a runs builder for the flutes, 8VA, and the clarinet ensemble. All the other runs are kind of standard runs like these. 
close out this video, I'm going to play a screencast of the piece uh, Saying Goodbye that I wrote as a Berlin Woodwinds demo. And if you go to their website, orchestraltools.com, you, uh, you can hear it there. Well, that's it for me. Uh, be sure to go to the Orchestral Tools website, orchestraltools.com, and read up on Berlin Woodwinds and other libraries they offer. Uh, go to their Facebook page, like them, follow them. And uh, if you want, go to my website, benvodkin.com, where you can hear more of my music and, and reviews and articles and the like. But I'm signing off. So you all have a great day.